The song Miss You by Oliver Tree and Robin Scholz is the subject of a major scandal because it was allegedly stolen from a small artist named Southstar who went viral for his song Miss You. There is no debate that the two versions sound exactly the same, but the reason why they stole it is pretty shady. I even presented a very possible conspiracy theory at the end of this video. Oliver Tree has a brand of being very positive, funny, and uplifting, so his fans were shocked to hear that he would do this to an upcoming artist, especially since Oliver was a victim of getting his art stolen just a few months earlier. The Kid Leroy's music video for Thousand Miles copied a number of different shots from various Oliver Tree music videos. Oliver takes pride in the fact that he directs and creative controls his visuals. He made a TikTok about the situation. Kid Leroy's new music video copies multiple shots from my videos. As an underground indie artist who writes and directs their own music videos, I am so sick of big artists ripping me off. Now I know it's not Kid Leroy's fault, so I looked into the director and it turns out this dude follows me on Instagram. Coincidence? I think not. He also said in a tweet, they steal that many shots and thought I wouldn't notice? A lot of his fans thought this was satire, especially since he was identifying as a small indie artist which isn't true since he's signed to Atlantic. But in an interview with Rolling Stone, he seemed to be a little bit serious when he said, it just seemed a little bit odd that even the framing is exactly the same. It's a lot easier to just build off the things that already exist and flipping it than doing something new. Obviously we can't know the tone of the text, but he didn't really seem to be joking there. But you should consider that a huge part of Oliver's brand is rooted in comedy and meme culture. The beauty of Oliver Tree is that 50% of people know he's joking and the other 50% don't, and I absolutely love it. His whole rise into the mainstream started with him doing skits on Vine and YouTube. Ultimately, he went on the H3 podcast to talk about the Kid Leroy controversy, and it became apparent that he was leaning into this to get views, and he most likely planned this with Ethan since they have been friends for many years. But this wasn't the first time Oliver leaned into the whole stolen song controversy for promotion. While rolling out his song Cowboys Don't Cry, he made a TikTok claiming that Lil Nas X and Columbia Records sent him a cease and desist, that he was copying Old Town Road when his song sounded absolutely nothing like it. He even made a fake TMZ interview. This one is pretty obviously a joke, but still captivated a lot of people. Reach out to you. Lil Nas X, he's been jacking my shit. Like he stole some melodies from my song a couple years ago. Lil Nas X, you know where to find me, bro. You can give me writing credit on that song if you want to, and you'll be hearing from my lawyer, Jeremiah Jeffrey. You see, Oliver is a master of manipulation. He knows that selling records is almost entirely based on social media attention, and he is a great storyteller. He knows people are infatuated with controversy and being exposed to the dark side of the music industry. His 2020 album rollout began by him saying that the label wouldn't let him release it until he hit 1 million followers on Instagram. He reached it with ease, then he said he needed to hit 2 million. I have no interest doing another album. This is the last album I'm putting out as Oliver Tree. This is the last time I want to have to go through this cycle of doing all this promotional bullshit. They want one more thing. The label's never satisfied. They want one more. When you get a million followers, it's, oh, you need to have two million followers. That's literally what they told me. Ugly is Beautiful, which was released in 2020, was supposed to be the final album, and he would quit music to pursue a film career. He claims that he spends 90% of his time promoting and not actually making music. And although he seems upset about it, we know promoting his music allows him to practice his love for storytelling and videography. Plus, it wasn't his last album. He just built up the story to rebrand, kill his old image, and build a new image for his next album, Cowboy Tears. But the controversy around Miss You, which is on its way to becoming platinum, isn't a big marketing campaign. This time, it's serious. I can't play a lot of the songs for copyright reasons, but even a short clip will allow you to hear the similarities. In May of 2020, Southstar was just another upcoming producer slash DJ from Berlin that nobody knew. He remixed and reworked an old Oliver Tree song called Jerk into an uplifting dance track. At first, he did not get permission to remix the song, just like the millions of other remixes out there. So he posted it, and basically nobody heard it. But after popular German rapper Young Hearn posted a clip of it on his Instagram story, it started gaining traction. Once TikTok got a hold of it, the song exploded. B1 Records, imprint of Sony, 
reached out to Southstar and said they loved the song and they could get the publishing rights cleared so that he can legally keep the song up. He signed with them, took down the original, got the song cleared with all three songwriters of the original song, Jerk, in which those writers were David Pramick, Marshmallow, and Oliver Tree. Southstar re-uploaded the cleared version on July 30th. Six days later, Oliver Tree and Robin Scholz, who is a world-famous German DJ slash producer, co-released their version of Miss You, which was the same name, same melody, same tempo, same pitched up vocals, and even the same length, 3 minutes and 26 seconds. This led everyone to believe that at some point Robin Scholz heard the song, made a one-to-one -one copy of it, and leveraged his status and previous working relationship with Oliver to step on Southstar and get the official remix. To make things even crazier, on October 12th, Southstar posted the sped up version of Miss You, and five days after that, Oliver posted his sped up version. Oliver fans rush to his defense and say, okay, he didn't steal anything, it was Robin Scholz, which is most likely true. However, Oliver did have to clear Southstar's version, so he did hear it. Plus, suggesting that Oliver never heard a viral remix of one of his older songs, then coincidentally worked with a world-famous producer to remix track 11 on his two-year-old album and made the exact same sound, is insane. Oliver was well aware of Southstar's version, and he knew what was going on. He made a business decision. Work with a world-famous DJ who has tens of millions of monthly listeners, rather than give an opportunity to a hard-working kid hungry for a shot in the music industry. It's just insane that they straight up copy-pasted the whole song and didn't give Southstar any type of credit or financial compensation. Plus, Atlantic Records didn't even deny that they stole it. When Southstar released a statement saying it was disappointing for me to see an exact copy of my rework, Miss You, is up under the name of another famous producer, Atlantic responded with, Oliver Tree and Robin Scholl's version of Miss You is the definitive version of the song that uses both the recording and underlying composition from Oliver Tree's original track, Jerk. Southstar remixed Jerk without permission and released a version with re-recorded vocals to avoid fully compensating Oliver Tree in his label. This is a lie. Southstar most likely re-recorded the vocals for quality purposes, but he did get permission to release the song, and in exchange, he gave up 100% of the publishing. Yes, 100% to the three songwriters, which means that the songwriters, which includes Oliver Tree, are making almost the same amount of money on both versions of the song. South Star's at 90 million streams and Oliver's at 200 million streams, plus the two sped up versions. But most importantly, Atlantic's statement did not address the fact that they made a one-to-one -one copy of South Star's version. They stole the song. However, it was Oliver's song to begin with so he can do whatever he wants, right? Unfortunately, that logic is flawed. It's Oliver's lyrics. Every song has two components, the composition and the sound recording, which is also known as the master. The composition consists of lyrics and melody. The sound recording is everything else, beat, percussion, bass, guitar, vocals, etc. Southstar changed every single component of Oliver's jerk sound recording. New beat, new rhythm, new melody, new instruments. He even got someone to re-record Oliver's vocals. He completely transformed the song. Therefore, it is Southstar's song. Song. There is no debate. Literally all of us say that Stronger is Kanye West's song. And if I said, no, that's Daft Punk's song because it uses their lyrics, most people would call that a weak argument because it is a weak argument. Sample, remix, interpolation, whatever you want to call it, it's all basically the same thing. Artists taking a piece of someone's song and using it in a new way should not automatically grant the original artist full ownership. Remember when Juice World had to give up like 90% of his record to Sting? We all agreed that was ridiculous and Sting did not deserve that. This is kind of like that situation. And also, Oliver wouldn't have ever even considered making a dance version of that track if it weren't for Southstar. And in light of all of this controversy, Miss You is on its way to being Oliver's biggest song ever, which got my conspiracy brain working a little bit. I mentioned two other instances where Oliver leaned into the whole stolen song marketing strategy. I also found it interesting that Robin Scholz and Southstar are both German EDM producer slash DJs. Also remember when I said that German rapper Young Hearn was the one who posted this song on his Instagram? How did he even find it if Southstar was a nobody? Is it possible that from the very beginning, Southstar worked for Robin, maybe as an assistant producer, or even a ghost 
producer. They made this remix of Oliver's record and sent it to him. Oliver came up with the stolen song marketing strategy. They had Young Hearn post it for promotion, then planned all the controversy from the beginning. Also remember that Oliver owns all the publishing for both songs, so he's getting his bag no matter what version you decide to listen to. And the craziest thing is, I also stole a song from T-Pain, and you can listen to it right here.